What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm looking to trade in the month of January, heading into the new year of 2019. But before we talk about this exciting topic, I hope you all had a fantastic 2018. If you just started trading in 2018, I hope it's going absolutely fantastic for you, and I hope you set even bigger bigger, larger goals in the year of 2019, and I hope you smash those goals. And for all you guys that are new to this channel, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that and stay connected with our community here, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box and let's get started with today's video. So typically when I make these videos on YouTube, I like to talk about the main markets, the Dow Jones, the S&P and the NASDAQ at the beginning of every single video and look at many different time frames of these charts so we can get a very strong understanding on where the overall market is heading. And this is something that is crucial. I do this every day, multiple times a day to really map out my trades in terms of these inverse ETFs, these market ETFs, and these, you know, large caps for the week, for the day, for the month. And, you know, it really helps me strategize and come up with a plan for each individual trade. So this is something that I do. And I really, you know, recommend you guys out there to do this as well. It really helps you understand the overall market and just deciding what stocks to trade. So let's do that right now very quickly. Quickly with the Dow Jones, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. Before we do jump into some inverse ETFs, some stocks, some market ETFs that I'm watching for this month in January of 2019. So let's hop into this three-year, one-week chart so we can talk some long-term support levels for the Dow Jones before hopping into some smaller frame charts to, you know, really take a look deeper into the technicals here. So some long-term supports on the Dow Jones and by long-term guys, it's not really long-term. It's really just about a year and a half ago from back in 2017. Well, the first one we see is at about $21,600. The second one being at around $22,300 and the third one being roughly at about $23,000. $300. And obviously, guys, from this big sell off in the beginning of October in 2018, about two and a half, three months ago, you know, we've broken below the support from this past correction in March and February of 2018. We broke below the support of about 22,300. And this past week, actually, we held above or we bounced above the 21,700 support from back in August of 2017. And we can see some closer movement on this 180 day, four hour chart. So we can get a better understanding here. So we notice, obviously, from the beginning of, of October, we saw some pretty strong sell off in terms of the Dow Jones. And then we kicked it into an even deeper notch, you know, in, in December, actually, the beginning of December. That's when we started selling off even quicker and some more panic selling started to kick in into the market, right? We've seen days where the Dow Jones was down 700 points and then it ended up closing the day up 300. We literally saw the other day the Dow Jones had a 1,000 point day. So this just goes to show how crazy volatile it has been either to the upside and especially to the downside because it's obviously been more downside than green that we've seen over these past couple of months. And yes, I just rhymed call me a rapper, Stas, I'm going to make some raps now, so I'm just kidding, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, guys, you know, I, I hope you like that little awkward joke, but, you know, uh, you know, we bounced on that support here a couple of days ago, and we've actually had a couple of green days 
in a row, right? These past three days actually have been green, and we see the NASDAQ futures as of right now are showing that they're green, and we're going to take a look at those in a couple of minutes, but, you know, this could mean we might have another green day in store tomorrow before, you know, ending off this Santa Claus, quote-unquote Santa Claus rally, right, that we might have been having, may have been having, having over the past couple of days. Who knows, right? But, you know, these charts are telling us that we're aggressively selling off. We bounce on that support. But what I've been telling people is that, you know, don't get too excited and think that this is a reversal, guys, because on this chart, we're technically seeing that we're still downtrending. We're still under the, uh, the resistance, under the 50 simple moving average here on the 180 chart. And we've seen this pattern happen before, guys. We've seen a couple green days in a row, followed by even more red, right? We saw that here, followed by even more red. Saw that here, followed by even more red. And now we're just seeing some more green days. And, you know, until we break out of these simple moving averages, guys, I'm not really seeing any reversal to the upside for the Dow Jones. And if we take a look a little bit closer so we can see these three green days in a row, they are looking good on a technical basis, right? We're making higher lows and we're making higher highs. And you know what I'm going to be keeping an eye on in terms of the Dow Jones for tomorrow, guys, to see if it's either going to continue this pattern or break this pattern to the downside is I want to see if it holds this trend line right here and pushes up to another higher high. Let's say it does that, guys. It's going to be testing this next resistance at the 180 simple moving average. And if we break out of that, guys, that's going to be a good move for these smaller, uh, you know, on these smaller uh, time frame charts here. We can see here, guys, that this has clearly been a uh, resistance in the past on this 30 day chart. So technically, you know, we are already above it. And if we make another higher high, that's a break of pattern on these smaller time charts. But again, if we're looking on the bigger frame charts, it's not really a break of pattern quite yet. That's why it's super important to, you know, keep an eye on all different charts when doing your analysis, right? But again, back to these little small charts here, you know, if we break below this on the downside, we might be reversing to the downside, right? But again, you know, what I want to see for a complete reversal to the downside would be A, first of all, to break this trend, and then B, to break the support at about $22,300, which is about 700 points lower than where we are right now. So just keep an eye on this, guys. Keep an eye on the futures. And of course, keep an eye on the large cap stocks tomorrow, pre-market hours as well, and just heading into the year of 2019 in general. So let's take a look at the S&P 500 very quickly. Very similar, guys, here on the 180 chart. But let's take a look at the three-year very quickly to identify some trends and support. And we see, you know, here there's been many supports in the past that we've broken beneath of, or not really broken beneath of, but we're getting really close to. And the first one we can see here is at about $2,330. The next one's going to be at around $2,220. And the next one is all the way down here at about $2,075. Do I think we're going to get that low, guys? Uh, that's pretty ballsy to predict that we're going to get that low because that's another 14% drop so I'm not really going to say that but who knows guys who knows if we get deep into a bear market here if the economy starts turning down you know even worse than it has been it hasn't really been you know turning down at all but it has been slowing down let's say it goes bad over the next couple of months like really bad stocks start to crash you know the 20 hundred you know the 22 thousand level isn't too far-fetched in my personal opinion, but at that point, something very bad has to happen before we do get to this level in my personal opinion. But, you know, do I think we can get to the 2300 level? Absolutely, guys. I think this support right here is one that we could potentially bounce on or get closer to over these next couple of weeks if we do sell off more. But, you know, keep an eye on this trend line here and the support on the 180 SMA because that has been a support over the past. And just judging off this very long term 20 year chart here, take an eye at this trend line. It's been a support over the past, and we're right on top of this trend line and the 50 day uh, SMA 
play here on this longer term 20 year chart. So these are all technical spots to keep an eye on, very critical for the S&P 500. Now coming closer to the 184 hour chart, let's take a look at what this is telling us here. So you know, just like the Dow, very aggressive selling off since the beginning of December. We had some pushback days, but we're still technically under the 50 SMA on the 180 chart. And uh, this has acted as a resistance in the past, guys. We see it here. We see it here. You know, we see it here and here. It's been a strong resistance in the past. And if we take a look at some closer term charts here, starting off with the 90 day, we are right at a resistance on the 50 SMA on the 90 day chart chart as well, which has been a strong resistance over the past couple of months since selling off in the beginning of October. And, you know, taking a look at the 20 day chart, we broke that resistance. We're making higher lows, higher highs. And what I want to see guys is to see a either higher high to confirm a further uptrend or a break of this trend and thus a break under around $2,400 to, you know, consider uh, reversing back down to the downside, right? And again, guys always take a look at many different time frames when doing your analysis draw trend lines draw supports draw channels these are all things that are super important when doing your technical analysis and if you guys want to make some you know or or draw some different types of things you can draw circles put arrows all you have to do is go to this drawings tab right here drawing tools and you literally have a bunch of different things here that you can go into if you guys want to see uh, me make a video on these different drawing tools, drop a comment down below. We can go over some Fibonacci stuff. We can go over some regression channels, some channels, you know, these oval circles, these arrows that you can put, you know, these different lines you can make, these all these different things that you can do with these drawing tools. I can show you guys in a separate video if you want me to. Just let me know down below in the comment section if you would like to see that. So on the S&P, guys, very very simple, very similar pattern. Just keep an eye on this trend on the 20 day chart to see if we're going to break it to the downside or continue to push up for a higher high. So that's what we're looking at in terms of the S&P. And let's take a look at the NASDAQ very quickly on the longer term chart here. If we look a little bit closer, guys, we saw support at around 6,200. Another one at about 6,000, another one at about 5,800, another one at about 5,750. And, uh, you know, as of now, guys, we're on top of the one at around what what time? What, what, at about like 6,100, I would say, right? Right on top of around 6,100. That's where we bounced and pushed above this past week. Actually, no, we bounced at 6,000. 6, pushed above the 6100 one and now we're testing the one uh the support from back in uh February and March of 2018 which has now become a resistance point because whenever we break below a support level a previous support it becomes a new resistance level so that's what we're seeing right here guys so keep an eye on that that's an actually a very uh, important spot Right now for NASDAQ, we got to break above that, which is now again a new uh, resistance. And then after that, the next resistance is going to be at around $6,500. So hopping a little bit closer on these charts, let's take a look at the, let's take a look at the one year, one day. Actually, no, let's take a look at the 180 day, four hour here. So on the 180 day, four hour, very similar to the Dow, the S&P, we're making lower lows. We're making lower highs. We obviously bounced on that 6,000 support. We're pushing up now, and we're right at a resistance point right now, and we're slowly peaking above it, honestly, at the 50 simple moving average, and especially since the futures are pushing up even more now, we're getting even higher, and we're testing that support that I was just talking about, or that resistance, rather, that I was just talking about at around $6,300. So we're keeping an eye on that level right there, guys, and on this 184-hour chart, you know, the next main resistance is going to be at this 180 SMA if we do end up pushing back up for a couple of days. And just like the Dow and the S&P guys, this one's making higher highs, higher lows, and it's breaking the time, uh, it's breaking the uh, 180 SMA on this 20 day, one hour time frame. So this, this is actually looking like a pretty decent reversal pattern right here. But again, I would like to see it get to at least, you know, $6,500, $6,600 before, you know, heading 
getting into that reversal pattern that we want to see in the overall markets. So now let's take a look at some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for this upcoming month of January in 2019. And since the market, again, like I've been saying this whole video, has been very volatile, I'm not focusing too much on swing trading this month. I'm mostly going to be focusing on inverse ETFs, hopping in and out of them, as day trades, maybe some swing trades in some larger cap stocks, you know, for a couple of days, depending on how the market is moving. You know, it's going to be a very play by ear kind of month when it comes to trading because it's been very difficult to swing trade and kind of just buy a stock and hold it for a week or two over the past couple of months, unless you've been, you know, pretty lucky with your picks. So that's why I'm really just focusing on more volatility ETFs, you know, oil ETFs, gas ETFs, and stuff like this. So let's talk about some of these right now and just to really see why I see potential in them over this next month in January. So let's talk about the gold ETFs first, guys. So gold has been uh, doing very well over these past couple of weeks. If we look at this 180 chart, we're seeing a clear reversal pattern for gold. We were downtrending, getting rejected by the 180 SMA, making lower lows and lower highs, you know, getting rejected by the 50 SMA as well. We kind of plateaued down here at around $1,200. We caught that support once, you know, twice, three times here. And then we started to take off and, and kind of make, you know, it's like a, it's like a cup pattern, right? We see this cup pattern starting to form here on, uh, you know, the gold futures and we've been making higher highs, higher lows and just pushing up in price. So what is this telling me guys? This is telling me that JNUG, which is an inverse ETF and its inverse is JDST. These two ETF combos are going to be solid in and out trades for this upcoming month. And since gold is extremely bullish right now, I'm going to be focusing mostly on JNUG. And again, JNUG is a bull ETF. It goes up in price whenever gold is going up in price. So right now, guys, you know, it's been riding the, the 50 SMA here on the 180 chart. Ideally, I would like to see a little pullback on JNUG before getting into it. And if we do see... Uh, uh, you know, back here on the gold futures, we do kind of see, you know, judging off the RSI levels and these candlesticks here, you know, I do expect a little pullback on the gold futures, whether that be, you know, back down here to about 1270 to bounce on the 50 SMA, or maybe back down here, you know, to about 1250 to get back to that, you know, previous uh, resistance point, which is now a new support, you know, I do expect a little pullback on the gold futures, which actually could turn out really well for JDST. So a way that I would approach this trade would be, you know, if these do, if these futures end up pulling back a little bit, you know, I would end up playing JDST for a day or two, right? On this pullback, profiting on JDST on this gold futures pullback. And then as we see, if we see consolidation around this 1250 to 1260 bounce zone, and then a slow pushback up to, you know, consolidate and start to form the uptrend pattern or continue the uptrending pattern, that would be the opportunity to hop into JNUG in the continuation of the push on gold futures. And if we're taking a look on this one year, one day chart, we are approaching a resistance at around $1,300 on these gold futures, so keep an eye on that. And sorry about all these random trend lines here. These are from previous, you know, analyses that I did on these charts. Hopefully, they're not too annoying, uh, you know, being all over the place. But you know, those are the main two that I'm watching heading into this month. You know, another one that I'm watching very closely is natural gas. This one has fallen off a cliff since the middle of November in 2018. We saw that peak at almost five dollars, and now. We're we're literally at about 310 right now. We gap down from 327 all the way to 310. And you know what I'm looking to trade that that's based around these futures are DGAS and UGAS, right? These are inverse ETFs. UGAS goes up when natural gas goes up and DGAS goes up when natural 
gas goes down. And obviously, since this big sell-off, D-Gaz, D-Gaz has been doing exceptionally well. And we're kind of in an interesting spot right now for natural gas. You know, are we going to continue to sell off? Because we do see that, you know, on the RSI level, we are technically oversold right now. We're already, you know, we're near supports from this past, you know, October in terms of natural gas, we're slowly peaking below those supports, honestly. And, you know, we really could go either way now. Would I be surprised if we consolidated here and slowly started to push back up as we get deeper into winter? You know, that wouldn't really shock me at all, especially from this massive sell-off that we've seen. But, you know, we always got to keep an eye on the weekly reports, the supply storages for natural gas, and, you know, everything that goes into that aspect of the report because that's very important. You know, that's a whole beast on its own, and that's something that you guys have to keep an eye on every Thursday. I'm pretty sure it's every Thursday. I'm pretty positive it's every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's typically when natural gas becomes very volatile. Once that report does end up coming out, because again, it shows you, you know, the storage supplies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, everything dealing with this. And, you know, you know, since we are showing a massive sell-off, massive downtrend, you know, in natural gas, you know, it's 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 very interesting right now the spot that it's currently at. And uh, I think anything can happen with this, you know, future because it's been extremely volatile over the past couple of months. And, you know, let's say we do end up holding above here and start to reverse. What I would like to see for a clear reversal is a break above the 50 SMA because that will really just show us that we're breaking the resistances. We're pushing up above previous, you know, resistances here. Here, here is one, right? We can see that one. Here, if we do end up pushing back up above 330, that's a good pattern or a, sh a showing of breaking pattern. If we break above here, that's another good show. And obviously, if we break above the 50 SMA, that could be a good indication to play UGAS, which again is the bull ETF. And obviously, if we break this support and we continue to head it maybe even into the $2 range, DGAS is going to continue to be a very good play. And now let's take a look at crude oil, which is at a very interesting spot right now on this 180 chart. And what we trade based on crude oil is two ETFs called DWT and UWT. And DWT goes up when crude oil is selling off and UWT is the inverse meaning it's going up when crude oil is going up so we see crude oil right now you know it's clearly been getting crushed over the past couple of months right it's seen its biggest drop in 10 years I believe that's what the fact was right it's seen that the biggest percentage drop from 77 to 42 dollars that it's seen in a very very long time and on a technical basis right here we see it's still technically under the 50 SMA which has been a resistance over the past couple of months and now let's say we get rejected here that's going to be a good indication to go long on DWT and that's personally what I'm waiting for this week honestly guys if we see a break of pattern to the upside you know that's going to want make us want to trade uwt obviously the inverse of dwt but if we see a rejection here and a continuation of the pattern which is what i'm waiting for right i'm waiting for either a break of pattern which would be this way or a rejection which would be this way to determine what i'm going to be trading right and obviously if we get rejected to the downside that's going to be a very good sign for dwt this upcoming week and vice versa for UWT if we break out of this you know resistance point so for this week this month guys I'm going to be focusing mostly on this 184 hour chart for crude oil if we see any major breakouts in terms of technicals we're going to see crude oil get out of this 180 resistance and the 50 SMA resistance because these are very critical points right until then DWT is going to be a solid play especially if we start to push down just keep Keep an eye on these futures markets. Very, very, very important to keep an eye on those. So some other ones I'm watching, guys, are SQQQ, TVIX, TQQQ, and all of these market ETFs that I have here. So like I've been saying, 
Since the market has been ridiculously volatile, these volatility market ETFs have been very good plays. I've been trading in and out of TVIX all the time. People in the group chat call me the TVIX king, which is pretty funny, honestly, because since the beginning of October, guys, since the market has been ridiculously volatile, I've been trading this one like crazy as well as TQQQ. And these are ones that are very volatile due to the market, right? TQQQ is going up when the markets are going up and TVIX is going up when the markets are going down. So this is why, like I preach all the time and like I said in the beginning of this video, it's super important to do your market technical analysis, pre-market hours, after every market session, and you know, as many times as you can, right, thoroughly, so you can understand what to trade in terms of these market ETFs. Because if you follow this strategy, guys, what I've literally been doing since the beginning of October, you'll do very well. I literally, guys, just do the market analysis, do the technical analysis. Obviously, I keep an eye on the news as well to see any negative news. And I trade these market volatility ETFs once the market picks a direction, right? Because that's what we've typically been seeing. We see whenever the market picks a direction, whether it's to the downside or to the upside, it aggressively pushes that way, right? And over the past couple of months, we've seen it aggressively push to the downside. And especially with this panic selling that's been kicking in, that's been making these go crazy. 20% in a day, 25% in a day. That's what these have been moving. So these are a basket of ETFs that I'm watching. If you guys want to add them to your list go right ahead and do so and also in terms of stocks guys tesla is one that i'm i'm watching very closely right now you know this one is at a support or it's bounced at a support at around 290 and we're testing this resistance right here which has been you know a support in the past now a new resistance point at about 335 so if the markets do end up having a couple of green days and tesla does end up doing well you know this offers about 10 percent to the previous resistance. So in terms of stocks, guys, Tesla's the number one most interesting one in my personal opinion that I'm looking at other than these ETFs that we talk about all the time. So let's say, you know, we have a ridiculous rally in the markets heading into, you know, 2019. What am I going to be playing? Well, I'm going to be playing large cap stocks and I'm going to be playing TQQQ as well as QQQ. But let's say we continue to sell off aggressively. I'm going to be playing put options against the large cap stocks. I'm going to be trading the inverse volatility ETFs and obviously crude oil natural gas and gold future uh, you know based ETFs as well so I hope you guys enjoyed this video it was kind of long if you stuck till the end drop a comment down below let me know I really appreciate all the love I've been getting again I hope you guys have a fantastic 2019 I hope you all have a great new year I hope you all end the, the month of December you know solidly I hope you all are having just a great time with your families whatever you guys are doing out there during this holiday season again Thanks all for supporting me. It means a lot to me, guys. I really, really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.